For our third roof condition, let's go ahead and take a look at what happened to that level beach house detail as it evolved. And if you look at some of the later houses, the Babushko Apartments, the McCallman House, or the Fitzpatrick's House, you'll see sort of a very similar thing happening with the way Schindler constructed his roofs. If we zoom on in on this detail, let me roll on in a little bit closer, you'll see that we still have some sort of uh, joist system, although I think it became more and more closed, if I'm reading the drawings right. Uh, so that it might have been like a sheetrock surface or a plaster surface at that time underneath it. But what's happening is, in terms of accomplishing the sloping of the roof, Schindler sort of figured out that, and supposed to going through and making all the individual joists, um, individual heights, it would be better to actually have standard heights joists and just go ahead and put some sort of a sloping surface made of insulation or just something that's kind of an easy to shape and uh, fill material. And that's what he sort of did for these houses. And that's still sort of the way we tend to do sloping roofs, is we'll often go through. And for flat roofs that need to have a little bit of slope in them, we'll go through and build up some sort of, oh, like a rigid insulation or a fiber insulation and have that go ahead and slope up. Now, to uh, conceal the different edge heights as you went through and sloped that up, Schindler also went ahead and incorporated a little bit of a parapet detail all around the edges. And it became all about the parapet in these houses, and that was all about really going through and creating sort of a strong uh, vertical edge uh, that would really kind of read very continuously like a lot of the outside surfaces, like a big strong stucco edge all the way around the house as an architectural statement. So let's take a look at how we can model some of those individual elements and handle those cases too. Okay, we'll go ahead and return back over to the Revit model and I'm just looking at a different corner of that same system and what I've done just to get started is already gone ahead and placed just some oh, just two by eights and I put them at two feet on center okay and I just want to sort of illustrate kind of a special condition for you which is really more this corner condition so let's just kind of take a look at how you can do this okay so there's a couple different pieces we're going to need to create one is if we're showing the structural framing independently we need to have one type of roof which is just the sheathing that's the uh, like plywood layer or the support layer that's going to support the insulation and then we'll have another layer which is going to be the finished surface which will then have the insulation kind of between it so let's think about creating some of those different roof systems and how to make the framing happen underneath it now, I'm actually going to go ahead and put the roof down first and put the framing underneath it, but you can do it in the other order. I'm just going to use the roof to go through and help me guide the placement of the joists and how far out they need to be. So I'm going to again create a roof by footprint. And I'm going to create a slightly different type. Let me just go through and put something in there which is just sort of plywood uh, sheathing, which is kind of just the thin structural layer. And that's only going to be, I'll take off the finished layer, delete that. I could make that wood sheathing, something like that. And he might have done that installed out of a plank system. These days we'd probably do it out of more plywood. But let's see um, if we can create something like that. And oh, these days it would probably be a half inch, you know, maybe five eighths an inch. I'm going to go ahead and make it uh, three quarters of an inch. Just give it the benefit of the doubt. So we'll go through and put that in there. And what I'm going to start by doing is just placing down that plywood sheathing. And I'll just do that by, I'll just draw a box for now. Although we could pick walls and kind of give a set overhang. There's a lot of different ways we can do that. In fact, maybe that would be a better way to do that. Let me go ahead and measure what that overhang is. Just as a starting point. Looks like I'm messing up right now, so let me undo that. See if I can measure from here to there, about three foot one. Kind of an odd dimension. I probably should be a little more careful when I was doing my initial drafting. I'll we'll go through and put the edges in there. I'll give it an offset of like three foot one on this side. We'll do the same thing over on that side, just kind of allowing that it really was a nice squarish corner. Okay, on the back side of this, let me just go through and draw some lines since we're not really completing the structure over there. I should have turned off the offsets, but I won't worry about that. Let me do some trimming. Okay. 
Okay, and for the purpose of this piece of plywood, let me just turn off all the sloping. We're going to let that be flat. And its height is going to be, oh, what did I say the roof face was? Yeah, I probably should have paid more attention to that when I went in. We can always adjust it later. Let's change the type. Looks like I missed changing the type. Soffit 2 foot 8. Okay, I think that's about right. Sitting on top of those. Let's see how those are doing. Okay, that part's looking good. Okay, on top of the surface, we're going to go through and add the uh, insulating layer. So, in terms of that, let's go through and uh, well, actually, what we're going to do is put the tar and gravel and put the insulation underneath it. The trick to this is that the insulating layer. You know, we're just going to have to simulate in terms of what's going on because in terms of creating these wall assemblies, it's hard to actually create something that has a varying thickness. So what I'll do is, again, I'll create a roof by footprint. Let me just go ahead and make the tar and gravel layer. I'll duplicate this. And we'll allow that insulation is going to occur everywhere between the tar and gravel layer and the plywood layer underneath it. So I'll say that that's going to be tar and gravel. Go ahead and just, I think I need to move that down. Take that one out. Okay, that should be okay. Let's see how that's going to work. In terms of placing this, we're going to put it, it's not going to be right at two foot eight, I'm actually going to put it up a little bit higher because I know it's always going to be just at least a few inches of insulation, maybe a two foot ten and then we'll sort of slope it from there above the soffit level. And then in terms of placing it, I can just go ahead and select these edges. Looks like I'm coming underneath it. That has me a little concerned in terms of what's going on. Let's see how that works. Hmm. Soffit, two foot eight, soffit, two foot ten. Should be right. Maybe I shouldn't be drawing in 3D. Let's try and uh, finish that. Oh, before we do, let me turn off all the slopes. Okay, looks like that's actually doing okay. So I have this thin sandwich right now. And here's what we're going to do, and this is something that some folks were already doing a little bit in terms of trying to handle sloped driveways and things like that. If you know that you want to go through and create sort of some um, sloping surface and it has just sort of points that can define the slope as opposed to just sort of a single uniform slope, what we can do is sort of choose the roof. In this case, I'm just going to choose the sloping piece, the tar and gravel piece, and I'm going to say basically modify sub-elements. And when I do that, I can start doing this. I can push and pull up on individual points. Well, that's a little bit too much. I went under. Let's go back up. Let's say that's going to be six inches higher at that point. Let's say that one's going to be four inches higher. That one over here is going to be, looks like two inches is what it's guessing. That's not so bad. And over on this side, let me say zero for one. Okay. But we can go ahead and just slope things to whatever degree we need to. If we need to sort of put some more points in there or split things, we can add things like that. For example, we could add a point if we know this is going to be a high spot or a low spot, I can add a point in here. Maybe I'll add a point in here too. Where now we have just a few more control points so we can really start contouring and adjusting this thing. So let's say that was, it's computing it to be 0 foot 3 right now. If I know that it's going to be a little higher or a little lower because it's going to actually dip there, I could kind of bring it down a little maybe bring that one up a little. Again, choosing it, saying modify. 
looks like it's computing to be about two and a half. Maybe that's a high spot because we're going to run the uh, water down from there. But the effect of doing this, and it's a little bit complicated to do this, but this is actually the way we do flat roofs when we're trying to slope the insulation around, is that's the other part of the roof. My section, let me zoom it out so I can show you this. It's just cropped a little funny right now. So then it's a little hard to see in terms of what's going on. But what you can see happening over here is, oh, looks like you even have like a funny roof type in there because it's still, hmm, we got two different thicknesses in there. Let's see what's going on here because I don't want both of them here. Did I mess up on the structure? <coughs> oh, I know what's going on. That's no, not that. What I'm actually looking at is um, since the section actually has a little bit of depth to it, you're seeing not only the insulation right at the level of where the cut is, you're actually sort of seeing it in the distance too, but you're starting to have that little bit of slope in there. So that's how I'd model that. I know it's not exactly that greatest in terms of it's not doing a good job of modeling the volume of the insulation between, but that will give you sort of the accurate slope, like relative to what you want to have on the outside there. So. That's doing pretty good in terms of getting started, but let's go ahead and kind of put some structure under that and put a parapet around it to kind of complete the, uh, the overall effect. Okay, well I wanted to show you a little bit about just how to frame up a flat roofed corner, or a corner on a flat roof, because it's a little bit complicated. If you sort of look at some references about how framing is done, you'll find some examples of this. But the way you approach it is something like this, just so you get some sort of sense. The idea is when we're going through and putting a soffit on a roof, we can always go ahead and cantilever the joist to, for the most part, kind of get out what we need. The problem is when we get to the corner, we have to sort of rotate the direction of the framing so we can go ahead and do a similar thing in the other direction. So what'll happen is we'll take something like this. And let me just sort of copy it over there. I'm going to rotate that around, just give it 90 degree rotation. Okay, and then we can pull that over here. Pull that over on the other end to the edge of the roof here. Okay, and I'm going to, I could actually go through and repeat the uh, roof in the other direction or repeat the pattern of the joist in the other direction, kind of array that around. What we want to do, though, that's a little bit strange, is go through and think about how to actually make this corner. Because although I can go through and array these, let's go ahead and I will just choose to make oh, like five of them two feet in this direction. That's fine. The corner is always the hard part in terms of figuring out how to do that. And here's how we basically handle a condition like that. What we tend to do is we'll take a piece like this, we'll bring it on down, and what I'm going to do is actually rotate it at 45 degrees. Put it right over the corner there. Stretch that out, out to make the corner. Okay, what I would actually do, and this is kind of just a little point of framing uh, niceness, is this one typically gets doubled up. So I'll put two of them in there. Did I get that right? Looks like they're a little bit overlapping right now. We're not overlapping. Let me do an alignment so we can uh, AL to align them. I'll pull those two together. Oh, and it looks like I was thinking incorrectly. Align it again. I'll get this edge to that edge. There we go. Lock them together. Okay, we'll have that diagonal piece. And then what will happen is we'll go through and sort of fill in the corner with pieces that look like this. I'll take a piece like this. And I'll bring it over four feet because that would be the next spacing pattern. Okay, that's a little long right now.
In fact, let's try this. Can I take that and TR trim it? Could, although it did sort of something that I don't exactly like in terms of trimming it off. Let me use a slightly different trim mode. If I use this trim mode instead, which will trim multiple elements, okay, let's do them all at the same time. I'll put another one in here and at two feet, and we'll do them all at the same time. Maybe that'll be more efficient. Another two feet. I'm a little bit off in terms of the way the spacing would probably work out. But how I'll do is I'll what I'll do is I'll take this, do the multiple trim. I'm going to use that as my trimming line. I'm going to trim this to it, and I'm going to trim that to it. Hmm, not so bad. I can then even take these two, control click them, and do a little mirroring. I can mirror them around that part. And now I can go back and fill in with these pieces. Either move those down or erase some more down in there to kind of fill in the gap. And that's how you go through and frame out a corner. The nice thing is, yeah, it's going to look good in 3D. We had all the elements placed at the right elevation already. So if you can, rather than placing all the elements again and worrying about the heights, if we already have some at the right heights and they're flat, just go ahead and use those. And uh, kind of copy and paste those around to kind of like create the framing diagram you need to kind of create the condition you want. Okay, final piece of this is to go through and just create some sort of a soffit wall that has like stucco on the outside. Let's kind of think about that. We should kind of try to find some detail that really shows how it kind of comes together. Typically what happens is we have some sort of frame wall that's sticking up above and below and the joists are sticking all the way out so that they're just sort of covered on the side. And let's see if we can kind of put together something that looks like that. So what I would do is let's go to home, see if we can come up with some nice wall type. Oh, what do we have in here that's available? It's actually not so bad. Plaster on the inside and stucco. We can go ahead and change that around a little bit to be stucco and stucco if we needed to. It's two by four, stucco, plaster, and lath. Oh, that's going to be pretty good. Let's go ahead and duplicate that. Plaster, soffit. Actually, not plaster, excuse me. It's going to be stucco on both sides. If you already know the name, you can just sort of type it in there as opposed to going back to the dialog. Stucco it is. Say OK to that. As we're placing it, this is one where we want to think about sort of the again, heights and levels and things like that. Those Joyce, we're at two foot eight above the soffit level. Let's go ahead and put soffit. Yeah, let's just even kind of go ahead and just put it at the soffit level. We'll have it come down to that. They're going to go up to soffit at zero. We can go ahead and bring it up to either soffit plus the distance or the roof level or the top of the parapet, however you want to go ahead and describe this. Let's say they're going to be going up to soffit plus yeah, four feet. Three feet's probably good. Nah, say three foot six, just enough to cover it up. Okay, now it's time to go through and place those walls in terms of doing that. I can sort of get the edges. Let me say I'm going to get the core face of the exterior. That'll be to the outside face of the uh, studs. Looks like I got to flip that. Flip that. Okay, and let's take a look at how we did. So what we have now is hmm, soffits that stick down a little bit too far in the scheme of things. Let's figure out why that is. We'll control click and take a look at that. Oops, looks like I didn't get that right. Didn't stick soffit at zero. Up there. That's probably pretty close. And now to just kind of check to see how those are looking, if we go to the section view. We'll see there are the joists, there's the roof, coming over a little further, there's my soffit wall. Got the plywood, 
framing. Uh, which I'm not cut at the point where you can sort of see the joists kind of sticking out. But they'd be coming out and actually supporting that wall, coming up a little bit higher than the top of the uh, insulation, coming down as far as we want to to kind of create the architectural effect we want. So that is somewhat similar to what we're seeing in that detail. Just poking up a little higher, poking down a little bit lower. Maybe that's going down a little bit too far. So we can go ahead and grab that wall and say, as opposed to going there, let's just say that it's, oh, soffit plus one foot, a little bit higher. There's probably some definitive point that sort of matches this geometry where that would all sort of line up nicely. Take a look at that. Oh, should have got that one too. Great. And now we are actually looking pretty good in terms of uh, something that has about the right appearance, coming up from the top, coming down from the bottom, and things are looking pretty good. Okay, so that's what we wanted to show you in terms of the different roof types. Hopefully that sort of makes sense in terms of the different wall start constructions or the roof constructions that you'll need for your models. And we'll go ahead and stop on the roof starts and start looking at the whole issue of some of the custom furniture and the interior components for these houses.